we have a good idea and we're sure it's going to be good and we're confident that it'll work. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to say that. But really, the risk is all on the client. Mm -hmm. And the risk is all with their money mm -hmm. because the, the agency gets paid no matter what. Mm -hmm. No problem. Again, no problem. I'm not mm -hmm. criticizing because mm -hmm. that's all we had. Mm -hmm. Now we have a new input. Okay. So I'm here with Chris Demetricus. Uh, did I get that right? You did, so yes. Sure. Demetricus, yes. 100%. Third Fantastic. time's the charm. Third time's the charm. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Um, Chris, you founded Manzanita KK. Mm. Uh, the tagline is intelligent marketing, mm. uh, and it's the first kind of in a category that you're defining as SciTech. Psych-tech. Psych tech okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, How trendy. Yeah, it's great, it's great. Yeah, yeah. The blend yeah. Uh, kind of psychology, technology, as well as just bringing truth to marketing, which I think is, is much needed in this industry. Um, you spent 13 years at Dentsu, let's come back to that maybe, but you also have a background in, in psychology. Uh, and so I wanted to kind mm. of maybe start there. Yeah, let, and let sure. you kind of set it up. Uh, yeah, I do, I, I did study during my formative years, I studied psychology. Uh, my studies, of course, in that Elon Musk way of, you know, no one needs to go to, to university. Um, learning is learning. Mm -hmm. well, I'll, just, I'll just say that and, and end that point here, but uh, my, my studies will uh, continue formally, most likely. I'm just gonna probably leave it at that That's so that I don't jinx anything. But awesome. uh, we, yeah, we do represent a really unique confluence of, of different areas. The first is, psychology obviously mm -hmm. the second is technology we have a, a crazy ragtag team of genius nerds who <laughs> uh have built we, we've built something very unique obviously mm -hmm. we're gonna that's the purpose of our mm -hmm. conversation mm -hmm. uh but most importantly um we have domain experience in advertising mm -hmm. and, and an unusual domain experience there so uh several of us are from dentsu as you mentioned yes uh, Dentsu is is a unique snowflake in the world of advertising, mm -hmm. uh, and I can probably talk some about that as well. But with a lot of platforms and technology, and uh, especially in advertising, they mm -hmm. say, "Hey, we've got this tool, and it'll solve all your problems, yeah. right? Yeah, it, you know, it'll it'll you can." do this omni-channel this and it'll pick up your dry cleaning for you and you know <laughs> but the thing bad. is is that <laughs> oftentimes what you find is that um, it's similar to the bias in AI that mm -hmm. everybody talks about mm -hmm. right AI is built by humans humans are inherently mm -hmm. biased psychology mm -hmm. and then uh, you run into oh wow this AI is behaving like <laughs> uh, okay yeah you, you know <laughs> yeah, you know where yeah, I wanted yeah, to go with that I know. okay yeah, okay yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. you, you end up with the same assumptions that are built into marketing platforms. Mm -hmm. And so it says, hey, why don't we just blanket the media landscape with a great high impact message? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you, you know, it's just more iterations of the same thing. And mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're going nowhere, maybe not nowhere, but, but kind of sort of nowhere faster mm -hmm. and faster all the time mm -hmm, with these mm -hmm. incremental improvements. That's where the domain experience comes in, mm -hmm. is that when you have a really unique experience at a, at a snowflake behemoth yeah. agency like I did, I ended up asking a lot of questions and really took a contrarian view mm -hmm. that said, okay, wait a minute, is this valid? <laughs> you know, is yeah. this... A, um, so, I mean, I can jump right into the density thing. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I guess just to set it up, um, you've been, you were at Dentsu for 13 years. Yeah. You were the second non-native Japanese to be hired into Dentsu, is that right? Uh, Westerner. Okay. Okay, so, uh -huh. so Dentsu was founded in 1901. Mm -hmm. And then over the span of a century, mm -hmm. uh, there were two Westerners mm. like me. Mm -hmm. um, there were other Asian people, okay, mm -hmm. but, but, but Westerners. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dentsu doesn't need, why would we need Westerners? <laughs> There were other people there, but mm -hmm. they're, they're contract employees or mm -hmm. temp staffers. Okay. So now sure. what we're talking about is, mm -hmm. is what's known in, in Japanese as seishain. Mm -hmm. And that is the quote unquote true employee or the lifetime employee. So lifetime status, why would you give that to mm -hmm. a Western person? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It didn't make sense. And so the first, for a long time, they thought I was the first. <laughs> okay. uh, but the, the first one was in the, you know, the analog era of the 20th century, oh. apparently, and was there for about a year. <laughs> I was there for 13 years. Um, and my entrance Amazing. 
coincided with the launch of Google. Wow. And so I was firmly in that in that digital era. And so uh, I, I found out recently by another mm-hmm. uh, guest on your podcast mm-hmm. that I'm referred to yeah. internally <laughs> as the OG Dentsu Gaijin. <laughs> Gaijin yeah. being foreigner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And so, I mean, over that span, I, I, I've heard that Dentsu is obviously, I mean, still probably pretty secretive and can be kind of, mm. um, yeah, siloed. And so over the course of those 13 years, maybe if you can go through some of your experiences, mm. what mm-hmm. you were working on, mm-hmm. um, any stories you can share. I mean, that would be amazing. Sure. Uh, sure. It's, yeah, it's a... Uh, the reason that it's unique, it's uh, obviously it's unique for a couple of reasons. Um, first is that you have, for example, you'll have Suntory and Asahi and Kirin and Sapporo. Mm-hmm. Um, in various forms, we'll, we'll all be there, depending on the, the era. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't happen in the West. Okay, you'll have every automaker, for mm-hmm. example, mm-hmm. except for Nissan, which would be at Hakodo, mm-hmm. are there. So Leo Burnett in the United States handles... General Motors, mm-hmm. Ford is never going to call them up. Yeah, <laughs> right. And so that's that's one very unique mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. The next is that it's lifetime employment. And so um, you know maybe maybe after we get to know each other better, mm-hmm. I can show you that tattoo that, that, that <laughs> you know everybody everybody gets. No, I'm kidding. It's not, not actually true. Uh, but there there really isn't up anywhere upward mm-hmm. to go from there. Mm-hmm. Is, is really the perception. That's the culture mm-hmm. of being inside Dentsu. Uh, and so therefore, this becomes your 6,000 person family. Mm-hmm. And so therefore, nobody talks and, and everything is really serious. And you know, this is, I mean, it's your future. Mm-hmm. If you mess up or there's a misstep of some kind, well, that could affect the next 25, 30 years of your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that also makes it unique. And so my role, I got in and, and my career took took the opposite trajectory not in the bad way but but i started at the top <laughs> mm-hmm. and and what i mean by that is i supported the c suite the mm-hmm. leadership and we did mergers and acquisitions oh, nice. largely and so mm-hmm. this was at a point when i mean the the new building wasn't built yet uh we were over in the old part of town and um Dentsu was making a bid to globalize and so i would support these people uh and and I got to be involved in some really interesting experiences by way of you know all of these crazy ad stories that you hear about. Uh, for example, one of our partners, we had a partnership mm-hmm. with another agency, with a Madison Avenue agency, and that that partnership was was all over the region. And Martin Sorrell and WPP, mm-hmm. as Martin Sorrell does, came in and he was doing a hostile takeover of our partner. Uh, and he, he actually did state he was doing this to get to us. Um, fair enough. Didn't happen. <laughs> but uh, let's just say that a certain executive from the United States was supposed to have a meeting in London. Flew to London, made a phone call, says, I'm not feeling well. Got on another plane, flew to Tokyo. We had a car waiting for him. And we brought him into uh, Ginza, the Ginza area of Tokyo. And... We were, you know, my boss was there, I was there, and this gentleman. A wall opened up, and we drove down and down and down and down and down. And the cars that were there were astonishing. (laughs) And there were some very large gentlemen who told us, in no uncertain terms, not to get out of the car yet until everything was locked down, all the doors were closed, and et cetera, et cetera. Confidentiality was maintained. And then we were ushered into this this amazing Japanese room with a babbling brook underneath Ginza. Okay? (laughs) So, So... the old man sat there and sipped sake for three hours while I was taking mental notes and he was giving me the full download of everything that was going on. Yeah. Um, it's been, gosh, it's been a long time. So I think enough time has passed that, that I can give that story without any kind of, uh, yeah, without, without worrying. So but I mean, it, that yeah. was, uh, you know, there were quite a number of, yeah. of, of stories and incidences like this wow. uh, from, you know, our law firm in in manhattan you know charging us eight hundred dollars to write an email and you know i mean it was it was that level of of interesting intrigue after that i went into mainstream advertising and i i worked on coke Mm -hmm. louis vuitton um mercedes-benz 
20th Century Fox and, and on and on. I spent, mm -hmm. I spent about half of my career in mainstream advertising working on the movie side. But uh, what was fascinating is that I would, the buzzword at the time was value added. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We have value added service. And so when we were dealing with our network, for example, mm -hmm. you know, the regional head would say, well, you know, our value added service. And, and so I did ask somebody once, I said, what's the value add? <laughs> you know, and I got, I got, it was a head scratcher <laughs> question, you know, well, our, our services are better. Well, how are they better? And that was my first step down this rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, so when we're pitching, what's our advantage? Well, our creative ideas are better. And I thought, okay, accepting Bensu when you're there for life. Mm -hmm. I knew that in, in Western agencies, you move around mm -hmm. on average every two years. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, it means you, you're, you don't have the juice. You mm -hmm. don't have the, the skill. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our ideas are better, but everybody's moving around at, with this two-year regularity, well, wouldn't that mean that your super good ideas just went somewhere else, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> what happens then? And you hear about clients moving with the creative people. Mm -hmm. Oh, this creative person moved over here, and so you know some beer company's gonna move as well. Uh, I, I remember I asked, what does a planner do? Mm -hmm. Densu, first of all, doesn't really have a lot of planners. Like the, uh, mm -hmm. the account people mm -hmm. handle a lot of that, mm -hmm. or at least did. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, been a decade yeah. since I left. Mm -hmm. but. A planner, um, yeah, strategic planner, a strategist. Well, they, you know, they, uh, they do all kinds of things. <laughs> that was the usual answer. Mm -hmm. And and so, you can see how over mm -hmm. thirteen years this cultivated into. What are we doing? Change, What's going yeah, on yeah. here? Yeah, mm -hmm. how do we solve this? So mm -hmm. I guess the, uh, the the touchstone moment for me was. Mm -hmm. I pitched, mm -hmm. uh, it, well, it was supposed to happen at 3 p.m. on March 11th, 2011, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But at 2.46, the fifth largest natural disaster yeah, in recorded yeah. history happened. So a month later, I pitched, <laughs> 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 and, and, and I won. It was a, a cell phone account, mm -hmm. and they simply wanted to sell 5,000 phones in Japan. Mm -hmm. And I had been in the movie industry on the Densu side, so I called up and said, hey, you know, I want to see the schedule, what do we got? Mm -hmm. Tied up with a Marvel, a superhero movie, mm -hmm. and by all measures the campaign was great. Mm -hmm. 5,000 phones, they gave me $5 million to do it. Already the math is not yeah. making a lot of sense, <laughs> right? Yeah. No fault of ours, because the campaign was great, mm -hmm. didn't even get halfway mm -hmm. to the KPI. And, and that was the moment, and I said, okay, wait, something is clearly not working. Mm -hmm. Something's broken. Mm -hmm. How do we fix this? And everybody talks about, oh, there's a naked woman in the ice cube, you know, and this subliminal marketing, subliminal advertising, and they're, they're, they're brainwashing you. Mm -hmm. Half a billion dollars in account value mm -hmm. that I've worked on, mm -hmm. I'd never seen that. <laughs> and I thought, why not? Okay, no, not, not yeah. brainwashing people, but, yeah. but why not incorporate the psychological element, the trigger, in, yeah. And 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 take that approach mm -hmm. rather than just saying, well, they probably feel this way, and um, but actually measuring it, mm -hmm. and that was the genesis of Manzanita. Nice, 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 nice. That's amazing. Yeah, I think that um, kind of what you what you're touching on now is is I think something that when we first spoke really stood out to me as being. Um, yeah, a, a big shift, honestly, in, in something that I think is, is well needed and, and long overdue. Um, from here, I think that yeah, there's, there's kind of two places I think we can go. Um, the first is if you want to give maybe an overview of kind of why we need this at this point. Like that, that, as you said, that was the genesis, but I think that that's one example. And I actually think it's kind of an industry wide thing that, that's, that's, been constantly happening and growing uh, and so uh, and the other angle is if you want to take a deep dive now into just maybe what that technology is uh, and, and what or not just technology what what the what the manzanita approach is mm -hmm. uh, and yeah and maybe go into it um, sure so whichever one you feel is more relevant I'm totally open. sure to. okay uh, sure it's probably wise at this moment to preface this by saying mm -hmm. I never 
attack anyone mm -hmm. and I never call anyone stupid. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I've had uh, a marketing director of a, of a global food and beverage brand say to me, Christopher, if this actually works, I'm afraid for my job. <laughs> uh, and it, it makes sense because in a way what we're doing is, is we've come up with a new input. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that we have a new input into the way life happens and transpires mm -hmm. similar to the way email was a new input into the way people communicated. Mm -hmm. You don't have to write letters and lick stamps anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new, you know, if you want to use a typewriter, mm -hmm. cool. If you want to pull out your vinyl and listen to vinyl, mm -hmm. you can do that. Mm -hmm. But there's so, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of it's not really. So we're at a, yeah. at a turning point. It's, yeah. it's similar to, I mean, at, you know, as, as, as humbly as I can say, I mean, mm -hmm. in a way, this is the introduction of an iPod. So mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. what this means is that um, we have a way to actually do the things that we've been wanting to do for a century. Mm -hmm. We've always wanted to make something that resonates. Mm -hmm. Our ads need to resonate with the target audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? And so we, we, we think and we think deeply and we study and we, everything that, that we do in advertising as an industry goes to answer one question and that mm -hmm. is, what do we say? Yeah, yeah. Some people will say, well, the media is the message. Mm -hmm. Not really. Yeah. Yes, but not really. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then, uh, um, well, you know, targeting, that's most important. Well, why do we do targeting? Mm -hmm. So that we know what to say. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, we're doing targeting because we understand what this group is like, mm -hmm. what their characteristics and proclivities are, so that we can better communicate to them. Mm -hmm. But the reason why uh, the message is the most important is because... That's where the rubber hits the road. Yeah. The message is what contacts the human brain. Mm -hmm. And getting somebody to do what you want, which is essentially what advertising is designed for, mm -hmm. requires that we insert a message that causes an action. Mm -hmm. And so many people might at this point be thinking, well, but, but that's what we do. Yeah. So that's so that's it's why I was reading um, one of your blog posts and, and you kind of equate what's happening now in the in the advertising landscape to to selling um, even in our conversations has come up but to selling uh, like a process versus oh, pizza, selling the pizza yeah thing. yeah the yeah. pizza okay, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah right okay so you walk into Domino's Pizza mm -hmm. and you say yeah large pepperoni what else are you gonna say <laughs> large pepperoni right and the guy behind the counter says okay great that's mm -hmm. awesome mm -hmm. we're really excited about this and we have a really good idea about how to make <laughs> a pepperoni pizza but we're not sure how it will turn out exactly yeah. it might come out of the oven as a ball of carbon <laughs> but either way it's gonna cost you 30 bucks yeah exactly. okay yeah. yeah that's essentially what we're doing and so what happens is that's the selling of an idea mm -hmm. we have a good idea and we're sure it's gonna be good and we're confident that it'll work. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to say that. But really, the risk is all on the client. Mm -hmm. And the risk is all with their money. Mm -hmm. Because the, the agency gets paid no matter what. Mm -hmm. No problem. Again, no problem. I'm not mm -hmm. criticizing because mm -hmm. that's all we had. Mm -hmm. Now we have a new input. Mm -hmm. Okay, So that's the yeah. selling of an idea. Now, if you walk in, I mean, you're going to, if you heard that at Domino's Pizza, you'd leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> you're out of your mind because you're buying an outcome. Mm -hmm. So they're selling ideas and then they're selling outcomes. Domino's Pizza is selling an outcome. Mm -hmm. If they screw up your pizza, they're going to make you another one, mm -hmm. period. And you will get your outcome. Mm -hmm. That's the paradigm shift that this represents, mm -hmm. is that now we have the ability. So, okay, so here's, here's what it is, da -da -da, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we now have the ability to read psychological characteristics from data sets. And they don't have to be big data. It's not like this whole third-party data thing. It can be small data. In fact, most often it is. Mm -hmm. And once we know what the psychological characteristics are, and not something that we dreamt up, like, mm -hmm. oh, well, let's do these archetypes. It's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with culture. It has nothing to do with mm -hmm. MBTI, mm -hmm. which is, in the, in the world of psychology, is not viewed favorably. Yeah, uh, <laughs> to say yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, okay. 
um, we developed a model with experts from universities around the mm -hmm. world, including Cambridge uh, and locally KO, and mm -hmm. uh, and it it essentially distills 50 years of psychological cognitive research down into a model and a set of algorithms that will output what we call the lexicon. Okay. Now that is a, a new vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And here's the new input you see. Mm -hmm. So once we have this new vocabulary, and I'll give you just a really basic example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, introversion versus extroversion, mm -hmm. right? So we have extroverts and introverts. Let's mm -hmm. say that you're, you're marketing spirits, mm -hmm. maybe whiskey. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to do a whiskey ad. And so the low, the low hanging fruit, I mean, if you're going to make a whiskey ad, what would it say? What would it look like? Where would it be? Yeah. Where would it be? I mean, for me, I guess it would be, I don't drink, so that's the first thing I'm going to say. So I have no idea really, but from what I've seen, it would probably be like, kind of like smoky room, you're like half filled glass, uh -huh. like, yeah, somewhere woody textures. Okay. Yeah. How many people? In the ad? Uh, probably one person. One person? Yeah. Okay. Dark Interesting. room. All right. All that's, right. What, that's what I see in my head, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All right. right. You, you just lost the extroverts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. that's a good point. I, right. I'm an introvert. So that's right. It. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Then, then you would say that. <laughs> yeah. So am I. I know it's hard to believe, but <laughs> believe it or not. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So usually it is, well, we have the trendy bar scene mm. with trendy people, well-dressed, mm -hmm. who live in a soft focus reality mm -hmm. and are having great fun, you know, mm -hmm. um, that, that's, that's a low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you do that, then you've lost us, yeah, the, the introverts. introverts okay? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, how do you bridge this gap? Mm -hmm. um, so that introversion extroversion is actually a very strong signal, mm -hmm. and that's something that anybody can think about right now. Mm -hmm. If you're, wow, how do we take advantage of this right now? Okay, just think introversion <laughs> versus extroversion. <laughs> yeah. Period. The end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have an entire, so introversion, extroversion is, is actually part of mm. the personality model, the mm -hmm. five factor model of personality. Cool. Okay. Uh, we, we measure quite a bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so part of that, that lexicon will have all of the indicators that say, uh, here's what you need to target with mm -hmm. your messaging. Okay. Mm -hmm. So think of it as stimulus response. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the simple exercise of stimulus response changes the paradigm of how advertising mm -hmm. is done. Exactly. Yeah. If there's some barriers that we have mm -hmm. to get over, okay? Mm -hmm. Because largely, um, we in advertising, we like to think that we don't have a problem, of course, okay? But that, <laughs> ele that elephant in the room is, is growing up and it's mm -hmm. getting a lot bigger <laughs> yeah. these days. Uh, but the thing is, is that, I'll, I'll give you one of them, okay? Uh, you saw, and we, all of us see 10,000 ads every day. Mm -hmm. So you saw 10,000 ads yesterday, can you name one? Um, no. No, like, yeah. yeah. The I answer can't. is usually no. Yeah. It's actually uh, less than 3% can. Wow. Now, these ads, these 10,000 ads were made by the most genius mm -hmm. creative minds. They were backed by huge budgets. Mm -hmm. And they used very sophisticated tools mm -hmm. and research methodology. Mm -hmm. And no one remembers. Yeah. And they were sold with, you know, and I, I did this. Yeah. They were oh, sold with all yeah. the promises of high impact uh -huh. and, and wide reaching and high engagement and all the yeah. rest of this stuff. But they're invisible. Yeah. Okay. 25 years ago, this is not true. Yeah. They would be visible. And the reason, or 30 thereabouts. Yeah. When you have four channels, mm -hmm. yeah. what are <laughs> yeah. you going to watch yeah. at eight o'clock on yeah. a Thursday night? Well, okay. And, and you don't, you know, now mm -hmm. a commercial comes on, what happens? Yeah, everybody's on their Something phones. Else. Right? It's it's interesting too because even when you said that now, and I was trying to think more about, like I saw a movie trailer, but I sought out that movie trailer, so it wasn't even like an ad that I saw necessarily. Like yeah. it, it was on a specific YouTube channel that I follow, and then I specifically went to look for right. this movie trailer. Right. So it's not, yeah, it, I didn't even see it in the mm -hmm. context of mm -hmm. an ad. I saw mm -hmm. it in like more of a content way where I was something I was actively right. seeing. It. Yeah, that's surreal. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so now yeah. the neuroscience of this. Mm -hmm. Every second, there are 400 billion bits mm -hmm. of information available to your brain. Your sensory mm -hmm. organs will be sending 11 million to your brain every second, mm -hmm. but only 2,000 get processed. Oh, wow. okay, it's, yeah. It's pretty heavy math. Yeah. 
if you want to be part of those 2,000 bits, mm -hmm. which we do, we mm -hmm. need to mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. part of those 2,000 bits, you have to meet a criterion known as cognitive resonance. Mm -hmm. And so cognitive resonance will be the spirit's ad for the introvert, mm -hmm. fireplace, mm -hmm. Pendleton blanket on the lap, That's maybe, maybe the cat, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Your Kindle or, or your, yeah. your old school, like, war and peace Book. made out of paper, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. that's, that's cognitively resonant, okay? Mm -hmm. If you show the party scene mm -hmm. to introverts... Immediately, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not that, that, oh, we'll see it and we won't like it. Yeah. We won't even see it. That's so serious. Yeah, okay, okay. that's and fair. And the reason yeah. is because it's part of the mm -hmm. 99 way more than 99 percent of reality that gets filtered out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by the brain mm -hmm. now this is out of necessity because mm -hmm. every if everything got in our heads would explode yeah <laughs> and so evolutionarily mm -hmm. we have to uh we dedicate about 70 percent of the energy of our brains mm -hmm. to this uh it's called compression like okay. video yeah. or audio or whatever yeah, yeah okay? that's uh, totally fair yeah so compression it's dedicated to that uh so that we can focus on what's important. Mm -hmm. Why do we do that? We don't have the batteries mm -hmm. for that kind of processing yeah. mm -hmm. to process anymore. Mm -hmm. If we do that, because already our brains occupy, they, they, it requires about 20% of our total energy mm -hmm. to run the huge brains that we have. Mm -hmm. And so if it gets any larger than that, mm -hmm. then we run into survival issues. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And so that's why it is, uh, why it is the way it is, okay? Mm -hmm. But if, you're, if you know what levers and buttons to push, mm -hmm. then you can create messaging that is stimulus. Yeah. That is cognitively resonant and it serves as stimulus. If it's not cognitively resonant, it's not stimulus. Mm -hmm. It's noise and it's, it's filtered yeah, and yeah. it's in the background and you're invisible. Yeah. Okay. So you have to be resonant. It's like only what is resonant account. serves as stimulus mm -hmm. and only stimulus will get response. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've been we've been getting lucky a lot, and it's it's similar to you know it's like having a piano in the room. Mm -hmm. The piano opens right, mm -hmm. but it, it's you know it, it opens toward us, so it's facing the other way. Mm -hmm. And you know those those videos that where they they take a ping pong ball and they're bouncing yeah, it yeah, off yeah. thousands of different things and sinking it in a cup. Yeah. It's like yeah. that. We need to bounce that perfectly so that it bounces back in and it hits a string and it makes a sound. sound yeah. And so for a century, we've essentially been doing that. It's become more and more intricate as the media landscape gets more saturated. <laughs> like and there are more bigger, ping pong yeah, balls, yeah, 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 yeah. right? <laughs> and, and so we're fighting. We're essentially trying to outshout each other and yeah. outshoot each other to hit mm -hmm. those strings. Yeah. But then we just walked over and realized, wow, there are keys there. <laughs> and if we open this yeah. thing, we can hit these keys. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's really what this represents. That's awesome. Yeah. Again, it's it's not a criticism on mm -hmm. any of current methodology. It's mm -hmm. not a criticism on on anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just a new thing mm -hmm. that we get to use in the application of marketing products mm -hmm. for capitalistic purposes. Yeah. Because that yeah segs into is. really the why. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, when you have something new, like for example, Coca-Cola was created as uh, a drug addiction. Mm. I think it was morphine, morphine addiction. Coca-Cola was, was created to treat morphine addiction. I had no Initially, idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. so, yeah. right. uh, and, and Listerine was actually uh, an STD treatment. That I've heard, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so these things have, like the microwave oven came from some really horrific military application oh, really yeah, no, yeah, I yeah. Not. <laughs> okay and so the microwave oven came came from that and so when we when we actually set out to build this mm -hmm. we thought oh it'll be it'll be really nice to inform creative and we can just do creative better yeah and then we can send that out to everybody and mm -hmm. it'll be awesome it's like a it's like a spot spot solution versus like yeah. what it kind of turned yeah. into yeah but then we figured out that wow there are other applications for so this many, yeah. and it starts growing mm. and you know, now it's a multi-headed hydra mm -hmm. of, of, of application across the entire process. Mm -hmm. So it really raises the question of, of why, you mm -hmm. know, what is the purpose of marketing? I love there's a, a blog, mm -hmm. little hat tip to somebody named Heidi Cohen. Okay. Um, Heidi Cohen created, uh, she, she has a very popular post. Mm -hmm. uh, she asked 72 people to define marketing. Mm -hmm. Heidi Cohen did. Mm -hmm. And she got 72 very different answers. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And to me, this this harkens back to the pizza example of selling ideas yeah. versus selling 
outcomes yeah. and solutions. Yeah. If you went to 72 different structural engineering firms <laughs> and said, what is it that you do? And you got 72 answers. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's going to be a huge problem. Yeah. So uh, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's in, the, in the realm of, of selling ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody loves to. So uh, Jeff Goodby of Goodby Silverstein, okay. right? Yeah. Very famous agency. Mm -hmm. You know, the Got Milk guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Jeff Goodby said, no one knows what they're doing. You just have to be confident. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Which gave rise to this culture of, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to outconfidence you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. That's what's amazing. It is. Is we don't have to do this because now we can actually measure mm -hmm. psychological characteristics. We know how to create stimulus that elicits response. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, what's the purpose of your campaign? Oh, well, we're going after engagement. Well, we're going to, um, we want repeat purchasers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing branding. Mm -hmm. Really? Is that necessary? <laughs> um, you know, and, and there's all these different things. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. KPI, but yeah. All of them have one thing in common, yeah. and that is decision. Yeah, now, yeah. I've illustrated that them, yeah. you even need a decision to see it. Mm hmm not even to consider anything else. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you're looking at a funnel, whether your funnel's this way or that way, but yeah. if you look at a funnel, at every step in that funnel, there's a decision. Yeah. And so suddenly, if we focus on decision mm -hmm. only, yeah. that satisfies every marketing objective you could ever think of. That's the real result. That's the underlying yeah. thing that everyone's right. doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it just so happens that the study of decision mm -hmm. is the field of behavioral economics. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. And so we're at a very interesting nexus point mm -hmm. because now we can go focus on decision, get decision with a scientific methodology that is repeatable mm -hmm. and that works. Mm -hmm. I can say, I don't want to say every time, but I'll say it every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I know what you mean. It, it's interesting too because I feel like... Um, for me, kind of coming from, I haven't worked in agency. I, I, I've only seen, I've only been brand side um, for most of my career. And so um, for me to kind of hear this, and when we had initially talked to, um, it kind of felt like a, a thing that I had always assumed was already happening. Like you talked about subliminal messaging and ads and stuff like that. And so I, I, I so when you talked about stuff like this, um, it, it was surprising more to me to see that this wasn't the way things had been done before. And it seems like something that, like with all of the research that's been done into behavioral economics, into psychology, it seems like this is almost like a very logical next step and something that I think people should be excited about in the industry, something that I would assume would be, yeah, like yeah. people would be lining up. And so from what I understand, that has largely not been the response. So how, yeah. how do you feel or, or what do you think is driving that? Or like, yeah, I guess it, right, even, right. even the education element now, like, how do you feel? It's, it's, it's very similar to if you went to the multi-trillion dollar oil industry and you said, <laughs> I've created an electric car. <laughs> yeah. Isn't this a great idea? <laughs> you know, yeah. the, 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 the probability of them saying, wow, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's shut all this down. <laughs> um, is <laughs> the probability is pretty much zero, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's a similar thing mm -hmm. in that uh, we're not a competitor to agencies. Yeah. So much. Okay. Yeah. We inform. In fact, we support agencies. That's that's what exactly. That's where it's it's. it's yeah. I can see it fit in that way. And so yeah. yeah. Uh, there, there are some certain aspects, some certain roles within the current existing mm -hmm. process that may fall away over time, mm -hmm. uh, but those people can certainly adapt mm -hmm. uh, to this new input. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's really no reason to, to be fearful <laughs> of the electric car, so to speak. But um, yeah, it's, it's been a really interesting experience having conversations with both agencies and client teams uh, and see engaging their response to this because some are very very excited and we know what their profiles are right generally there's a profile uh, that that does is very quite quite receptive mm -hmm. um, there's another profile that that uh, is not <laughs> um, 
You I can have, imagine I have what they are. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. what I was going to say. You can imagine what they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it is interesting because this is, you know, I, I guess the big reason is that mm -hmm. disruption mm -hmm. is fun to say, you mm -hmm. know, if you're a 24-year-old startup <laughs> captain, we're going to go out and disrupt and you're going to mm -hmm. write it on your wall, maybe drop the F-bomb yeah, too, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. and, and motivate everybody and say, yeah, we're disruption. But let's remember that disruption is not a positive word. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, I, uh, you might be familiar with Dr. Matthew Walker's work mm -hmm. uh, on sleep. No. Um, no. He's, he's, he's the preeminent sleep, sleep scientist okay, in the world. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so he found out that yeah. Daylight savings time in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and presumably elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, when when it, it you spring forward, yeah. you lose an hour of sleep. Yeah. Heart attacks spike. Oh wow! That's disruption. That makes so much sense. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's the worst. That's what, yeah. that's why I moved to Japan. Actually, was just to get home. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, uh, in the Big Short. Yeah. If yeah. you've seen the movie The Big Short, yeah. Love that movie, yeah. the two guys are celebrating, and Brad Pitt turns around and goes, "Don't celebrate," yeah. because with uh, Every 1% that the unemployment rate goes up, 40,000 people die. Mm -hmm. And I actually looked this up. I was really curious. Mm -hmm. uh, was that true? And, exactly. and, and, and roughly, it was, it was <laughs> research out of North Texas University. Oh, nice. yeah. and, and roughly, yeah. I mean, you can't wow. attribute it to exactly, it was about 38,000 people. Wow. Uh, but that's disruption, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when something gets disrupted, bad things happen. Mm -hmm. That's the, by definition of the word disruption. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm actually hesitant to say, oh, yeah, we're disruptive technology, mm -hmm. but we're a new input. Mm -hmm. We have a new piece of information. Mm -hmm. You can open this and there are piano keys mm -hmm. and you can play them. Mm -hmm. And now you can create stimulus that gets a response. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you don't think that you have a problem mm -hmm. at all to begin with, mm -hmm. then it's, you know, it's, it's a very hard sell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's in, it's interesting too. I've spoken to um, some of the candidates. So I used to work as an ad tech consultant, and so this is where I, I got most of my background on understanding of the agency side, understanding of the tech side, and um, a lot of the people who were coming from legacy agencies, um, that was one of the biggest points of dissatisfaction that they had. They felt mm. like um, they didn't have a full understanding of of what the value add actually was and as kind of you had alluded to with um with some of the, the the campaigns that you worked on where they would put so much effort so much time and then that was basically it they would never see the other side they would never see the result they didn't have like right. a hard definition of success like the success to them was well we we made a TV commercial, it went out, we got X amount of impressions, and that's kind of the whole campaign. And so it's like, that. how does that translate to the actual business? So there was never a clear line. And so I think that what stood out to me as part of this solution, um, do you want to say the name of the solution too? I don't, I don't know if we've said yeah, that Yeah, 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 I'm happy to get into okay, that. Okay, yeah, so we have, yeah. we have the, yeah, some, a little bit of vocabulary. Yeah. Um, so Manzanita itself, yeah. we are the company, we've built a platform called Axiom Tree. Nice, okay. Axiom Tree runs a set of algorithms mm -hmm. called SciComm. Okay, that's great, yeah. <clears throat> SciComm, pardon me, SciComm is short for psychometric communications. Kitchens. Okay, yes. And so SciComm, some people say, oh, wow, SciComm, that sounds really, you know, evil and, and, and <laughs> <laughs> like spy talk. Um, not, not really. It's just, it's just measuring yeah. people. It's, it's no different from in-person sales. Yeah. If you're standing in front of somebody yeah. and you see them kind of go, oh, well, you yeah, know, you're exactly. going to change your tag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're going to read that information. Yeah. You're going to say, okay, well, actually, I have this. Yeah. And you're going to try to capture their intention. Yeah, yeah, it's sure. really no different than that. Exactly. Okay. So what we can do now through SciComm, mm -hmm. through the algorithms, is that Axiom Tree will assess an audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll, I'll compare it to the current process. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing, say, for example, digital marketing, mm -hmm. uh, you might be using third-party data. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're using that data, you're going to create a segment of people who have curly hair, uh, who wear white shirts, <laughs> and who juggle golf balls on Saturdays, but every other Saturday. Yeah. And, you know, you can do that yeah, with, yeah, yeah, with yeah. third-party data. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they're going to say, okay, wow, yeah. And they're interested in... Uh, 
cats and they're yeah. interested in Diet Coke. Okay, yeah. cool. So let's let's make an ad that has cats in it. With Diet Coke. Eating, you know, drinking yeah. some Diet Coke or whatever. Okay, yeah. you, because they're interested in that. Yeah. And then there's a bunch of people in there and you lose the yeah. introverts. Yeah. Okay, so the, the psychometric part of it, the stimulus part of it, really gets lost in interest equates to decision. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, there's a cat. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Thanks. Not too many people. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. I'm, I'm buying a Diet Coke now because I love this cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and and so then it becomes mm -hmm. one of the 10,000 ads that gets filtered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's where it changes. Um, I'll preface this by asking you, mm -hmm. um, do you upload photos of your lunch to Treasure Data? No, no. Do you ever... Um, create a status update and send it to Axiom or Merkle? No, I haven't yet. No? <laughs> no. Okay. Hmm. No. All right. Yeah. Or, or Epsilon or any of these others, these, da yeah. these huge data companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody does that. But yeah. do you do that on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn? Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So our hypothesis is this, and, and I mean, this, this mm -hmm. can address the third-party data issue, is mm -hmm. that once we have what we call affinity, mm -hmm. all right, let's say that, uh, let's say that we're Ibanez guitars mm -hmm. and we want to sell our guitars. Mm -hmm. Are we going to sell those to cat enthusiasts? <laughs> I guess. Probably not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cat enthusiasts and cat owners have affinity for cats. Mm -hmm. Maybe they play guitar. Yeah. Never say yeah. never. Yeah. Okay. But we're probably far better off if we target people who have expressed interest in the guitars. Exactly. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. They own or they mm -hmm. love guitar music or mm -hmm. they're interested or they want to, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So then that becomes the segment, mm -hmm. the segment of people who have affinity for guitar. Mm -hmm. From there, and we don't need really anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We don't need the fact that they eat, you know, strawberry pudding yeah. in the morning. <laughs> okay. Um, we take that segment and we will cluster that segment into cognitive cohorts. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's groups of people who have similar characteristics and similar triggers. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. we have the means to generate what we call CRC, which is Cognitively Resonant Communication. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see there's an extra step there, mm -hmm. right? And the demographics will be all over the place. Yeah. It could be 15-year-old girls and 50-year-old dudes like me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All mixed in together yeah. with a similar, hey, we like guitar, mm -hmm. and we play guitar, mm -hmm. and we're introverts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and other things. Yeah, it has, yeah it right. other okay. yeah. So that becomes a cluster. Mm -hmm. Other clusters, yeah. And so from there, we can actually generate, um, so Axiom Tree and Psycom basically stop there. Mm -hmm. Now, then it goes into the intelligent marketing side, yeah, which yeah. is engineering CRC. Mm -hmm. How do we talk to this cluster who's introverted. Effectively, that's yeah, going to yeah. actually provide a stimulus. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so we, we generate ideas mm -hmm. okay, that are based on hypotheses mm -hmm. and based on the uh, quite a number of factors. Um, there's cognitive biases involved mm -hmm. that are germane to that particular group. Mm -hmm. And then we will say, okay, here, here are some, some very high probability directions. Mm -hmm. And then we go validate those. Mm -hmm. And then from that validation phase, we learn wow, they're very strong in the following channels. Mm -hmm. And this particular idea, or CRC, mm -hmm. was more effective than the others. Mm -hmm. So before putting any money behind this, you'll know. Let's go. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Then there's an execution phase that includes, you know, because I, I get this question mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, well, how are you going to run, you know, if you have seven clusters, how are you going to run seven campaigns at once? We don't. We don't. We just run one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Similar to games, like yeah. gaming. Okay, yeah. one percent of one percent. Mm -hmm. So, in the world of gaming, of casual games, of mobile mm -hmm. games, mm -hmm. one percent of the player base will pay money yeah, yeah. for a skin or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. But one percent of one percent will buy. Is the whale? Yeah. yeah, that's those are the whales. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if we could profile only those mm -hmm. and build that particular group. Yeah. Suddenly, we don't have to waste time or money or energy on resources yeah, on yeah. on the long tail. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, wham, ROI happens. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So when we do the, the execution part, we look at what is the ROI cluster. Mm -hmm. 
And if we are using first party data, then we have that particular mm -hmm. information. We'll have purchase history. Mm -hmm. And so we can see, okay, wow, yeah, this is the high value, high population cluster. Cool. Yeah. We aim, if we're doing ATL, like yeah. TV, yeah. we'll aim it at that one. Nice. Okay. Then the next two highest in value, mm -hmm. maybe we'll do the big digital. Um, we'll do the influencer stuff. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else will just CRM. That's right. Yeah. Send them emails. Nice. Okay. So it's all yeah. distributed accordingly. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Right. That's awesome. So I have um, kind of a follow-up question there. Um, and it is, oh, I think I lost it. Give me one second. Um, I, I have the first one that I want to know. So you, you kind of mentioned, oh, I know, I know what it was. Um, and they're, they're actually connected. So I, I guess I have two. Um, the first is you mentioned reliance on first party data. Um, and so would this, it, it sounds to me at least like uh, in the coming cookie restricted future, it doesn't sound like this would be affected at all, essentially. Is that correct? That's like correct. it sounds like, okay, okay, cool. That's correct. That's because you'd correct, yeah. primarily be laying, relying on first party data or Yeah. We we uh, have other other sources. Okay. I mean, we okay, can do cool. we can do social scans. I mean we have um, we have models that are looking at mm. what the discussion is across the entire country right now. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so we have we have a number of entry points. Nice that we can go in. So if in the case of, of oh wow, we don't have any first party data, mm -hmm. it's okay. Nice. Because it's okay. a starting point. Okay. And then we get it's just a matter of confidence. And so we measure okay. confidence. And there's a confidence coefficient mm -hmm. that accompanies every analysis that we do. Okay, cool. And so we, we have a starting point and we yeah. say, okay, wow. Yeah. Taking that strong signal for yeah. introversion or, yeah. or even openness. Yeah. Or um, there's one that we call in our lexicon we call reactive. It's people okay. who um, take an action to prevent failure. Okay. Right. So the proactive people, they're, yeah. as, as you would, I'm going to take an action, I have a goal, I'm going to yeah. get one step closer. Mm -hmm. That's not interesting. Mm -hmm. But what is interesting mm -hmm. uh, are the people who take action to prevent failure. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find a lot of this type, mm -hmm. finance bros. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And, and it makes sense. Yeah. They want to prevent failure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we did a project for uh, an athletic company mm -hmm. that you may have heard of. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do this, you know, we do a lot of our work behind agencies, so mm -hmm. we're unable to yeah, really yeah, say it. Yeah. That's totally fine. Yeah. So the, for, the, for the, um, the proactive people, we said, hey, you know, mm -hmm. these shoes will get you to the finish line. Mm -hmm. But for the reactive people, we said, these shoes will get you to the finish line this time. Mm. And what that does is that that very subtle shift triggers that, oh, wow, yeah. right? Because it's resonant, because yeah, yeah, they're yeah, constantly yeah. thinking about, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to fail. Yeah, Can't yeah, fail. Yeah, they'll get you to the finish line this time. Oh, oh, awesome. Okay, yeah. so that becomes resonant for, yeah. with them. <laughs> That's super interesting. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did that? Answer? So yeah. So what? My I guess my follow up question there is like, if you're a brand, like if, if there's a brand that wants to work with you, maybe not agency. Agency is a little bit different. But mm -hmm. like if it's a direct client, um, what what would they need to bring to the table? Like what what mm -hmm. would that first step be for them? It's a great question. Uh, really, nothing. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I, I know it's it's it's, <laughs> it's that, well, that's helpful. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, no, no. It's like, this is this is the easiest thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if if they have data, yeah. and every client has different data, mm -hmm. and so I, I get asked a lot, well, "What do you need? What kind of data?" It's yeah, like, well, yeah. So I'll give you a, an example, yeah. okay, to 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 mm -hmm. really illustrate that anything works. Okay? Cool. Yeah. So within any given client data set, there's going to be some of it that's unreadable, mm -hmm. uh, that's just, they don't even know what it is. Yeah, yeah. All right. And it might be a series of ones and zeros. Mm. Um, but then there will be some, there's purchase history and I, I or um, we were talking about web optimization. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be how people move through a website. Mm -hmm. there, there are a number of things that indicate behavior. Every data point indicates something about behavior. Mm -hmm. But then there are all these ones and zeros. Mm -hmm. Now, what we can actually do with that is we correlate the sequence of ones and zeros to whatever their mm -hmm. PSYCOM profile happens to mm -hmm. be, and we can use that to s statistically mm -hmm. substantiate and, and increase confidence, even though we have no idea what it means. Yeah. And the platform will do that automatically. That's awesome. So give us what you have. Could be and if you yeah. have nothing, mm -hmm. that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because we will actually, we have our own growing database. It's mm -hmm. growing all the time. Mm 
uh, and we can actually scan social media. Mm -hmm. And so if we're talking about spirits, because mm -hmm. uh, I get this question a lot too, mm -hmm. well, how, how can spirits, you know, if you're vodka, how can the word vodka tell you anything about who they are? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. That is affinity mm -hmm. only, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, you're somebody I want to know about, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. vodka. Mm -hmm. We scan the rest of their profile. Yeah. And through the model that we have, the Psycom model will actually be able to interpret what they're saying, how they're saying it, the frequency that, that they're saying and all that. Yeah. And we'll be able to take that group mm -hmm. of however many thousands of people or millions mm -hmm. and say, ah, okay, here are the distinctive clusters mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. that particular group. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So not, not to be super critical of agencies or anything like that, but it, it, as I said earlier, it kind of feels like this is something I had always thought was already baked into it. And my, I guess my question is, um, like how, how did we get here? Like how did we end up relying on, on something that's so on, I guess, people's confidence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, that really stems from, it gets back to the, the pizza example. It stems mm -hmm. from, we need to have a good idea. And there are industries where, yeah, I need to have a good idea and you're going to pay for the best attempt mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, brain surgery, for example, yeah. you know, yeah. um, but you know, these people, hopefully the success rate is going to be high, mm -hmm. but you know, it will, it will vary. Mm -hmm. And so you are taking a shot and it is a gamble. There is risk probability levels uh, of success will vary, mm -hmm. okay? The, mm -hmm. the variance that is inherent to that. Uh, you know, and, and data isn't new. So my, my former boss at Dentsu, you know, mm -hmm. he would grumble, you, you guys always talk about data. Well, we use data too, you know? And it's like, <laughs> well, yeah, but you're using a pencil and an eraser, <laughs> you know, with your data, uh, which, which, which raises an interesting point. And that is that when you're, when you're gathering data, Usually that's consumer research mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. going to ask people questions. And so this is another area that where significant breakthrough mm -hmm. has, has happened thanks to neuroscience and data science and the advances that we've had. Just, just the ability to read what's going on in the brain mm -hmm. uh, has changed the game. And so when you ask somebody a question, why they did something, mm -hmm. they often don't know mm -hmm. because we operate on these automatic programs, mm -hmm. okay? And, and, and thousands and thousands of decisions are made for us mm -hmm. essentially every single day. Mm -hmm. um, you've experienced this when you wake up on Saturday morning uh, and you know that you should go to the gym, mm -hmm. but you don't want to. What part of your brain is saying, I just want to, I just want to, <laughs> right? And then what part of your brain is saying, no, 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 I need to, mm -hmm. I need to go to the gym and work out, mm -hmm. right? And there's this debate. Mm -hmm. Who's debating with who? Right? Yeah. There's a survival mechanism that is acting accordingly. And then there is your logical, rational, conscious mind that mm -hmm. is saying, well, no, according to my sp personal spreadsheet, mm -hmm. you know. And so that debate rages and it just depends on who wins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so when you ask the neocortex, it doesn't know because it is not the center of decision, mm -hmm. right? So the, the midbrain can process uh, almost 2,000 bits per second. Mm -hmm. The neocortex, which is responsible for the Xbox and SpaceX and mm. every major innovation that mankind has ever produced, mm. it only processes 50 bits per second. Mm. And decisions are yeah. not one of them, okay? It can override decision, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so when we say, oh yeah, let's go find out what people think. And so these, the research agencies will, again, no offense, mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not stepping on any toes. Um, we just have a different way, mm -hmm. right? We have the email, whereas previously it was, it was typewriters. But when you ask the neocortex, it will often confabulate something. So mm -hmm. the word is confabulation. Mm -hmm. And we do that in order to uh, protect our place in the tribe. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. If you walk up, let's say you're going to study, you know, Julie is here and she has her, or, or maybe it's Tom, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and with with a Louis Vuitton bag mm -hmm. and you say hey Tom why do you buy luxury goods mm -hmm. and of course Tom is gonna say because I really love the quality mm -hmm. right <laughs> yeah naturally yeah, yeah. right but if you can actually measure if, if, if you use Psycom for example mm -hmm. the real answer would be well 
I practice conspicuous consumption mm -hmm. to cover over my mm -hmm. self-esteem issues. Mm -hmm. And no judgment like because, yeah. because esteem mm -hmm. is a valid measure and it's mm -hmm. a valid trigger mm -hmm. uh, when we're making CRC or stimulus, you know, communication mm -hmm. that's stimulus. Mm -hmm. But the research will say, oh, quality. Yeah, they want quality. Yeah. So then, then two ads appear here. There's one that says, yeah. oh, here's a here, whatever bag. Yeah. Quality, you know, yeah. the utmost quality. And then there's another hypothetical ad that, that has Tom there with all of Tom's friends, like, admiring him. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Which ad is going to serve as stimulus? Mm -hmm. That one. But which ad is going to get made? This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what the research said. Yeah. So that's a huge issue. And we know that. We call that the say-do gap. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. People say one thing. And, you know, and, and David Ogilvy has this famous thing where people don't say what they do, what they say, and say what they mean, and mean what they say. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we solve that because we look purely at behavior. Do, yeah. And behavior mm -hmm. is running on those non-conscious programs. Mm -hmm. And it's operating on the principles of resonance. And so it, it, it does solve that, that issue. Mm -hmm. So we back up and we get to the question. And that is, how did we get here? Well, again, could be said, nobody knows what they're doing. You just mm -hmm. have to be really confident. Mm -hmm. So in this culture of confidence, mm -hmm. well, we're absolutely confident. And you sell the hell out of that idea. Yeah. That culture perpetuated this, well, we're not really sure about whether this is going to work, but mm -hmm. we hope it will. Yeah. And, and then we get into the digital age, and all of a sudden we have numbers. Mm -hmm. And if we can make those numbers go the right way, yeah. well, that's <laughs> a great like thing, can, right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And, and look, it went from 0 0.001 yeah. to 0 0.002. Yeah. That's good, right? Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, so then that again perpetuated this well yeah. we in, in a way it exacerbated the problem because we we got admittedly admittedly i admit yeah. it we got a little bit lazy and said oh well you know the digital stuff's going to take care of that and uh and so then it was a perfect storm of mm -hmm. wow we're, we're really not sure what to do in this media saturated environment mm -hmm. you know if you watched all of the the videos uploaded to youtube in a 24-hour period mm -hmm. you took those videos you watch them back to back it would take you 1972 years <laughs> right that's, that's yeah. what we're competing with before yeah. i mean in, in in the 80s it was like well there's abc nbc cbs <laughs> and the cosby show is on thursday night at eight o'clock okay who's competing with that mm -hmm. that's what it was yeah now it's TikTok and, and every cat video that's ever been uploaded yeah. and you know I mean our, we're so distracted and so and the Cosby show no. and the, <laughs> yeah. well you could probably find it yeah. um, and that's what we're up against so it's a completely different game mm -hmm. but we're playing by the rules of the this olden was, days yeah, yeah, yeah. and now we simply have and I want to state humbly that we simply have a new input mm -hmm. we have a new solution we have a new reading that empowers us to do something we've never been able to do before. Just cut through the noise. And, and of course, you know, my, my arms are wide open mm -hmm. and I welcome anybody mm -hmm. who wants to be part of this mm -hmm. to use it mm -hmm. and because it, it's cause and effect yeah. and it's stimulus and response. Mm -hmm. And the response happens every time yeah. because the process is iterative. Amazing. Yeah, yeah I mean, honestly, I, I'm super excited about it. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, from our first conversation and then doing the research um, for this interview, uh, it seems again to me something that I always had assumed was already baked in. Uh, and so it's great to see it really being uh, like lifted and focused on. Um, and yeah, so my next, my, I guess my, my last question really mm -hmm. is, there must be some level of interest, excitement. How are things going on that side? Um, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we do have interest. Uh, I'm, I feel very fortunate. We have uh, private equity concerns, both mm -hmm. here in Japan and, mm -hmm. and, and in Europe, in London, uh, that have really, they, they see the value of what we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. And they are leading some conversations for us now. Um, those are still quite preliminary. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, things, are, things are moving and, and, and I think the value is pretty clear to a certain group of people. Um, generally, yeah, it would be the, the high openness crowd yeah. is how we would describe them. <laughs> and openness is, is uh, open to, openness to new experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, they value abstraction mm -hmm. and they require new things. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we've, we've found that that is usually the type of, 
uh, individual that, that takes a real keen interest in this. The other type of individual is uh, those companies that are really focused on generating revenue. Results, yeah. Yeah. Um, we can focus, certainly advertising, we can focus on purpose. Um, if you can do that, that's great. It's really, you know, that's what life is about. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not generating revenue, mm -hmm. then purpose ends up becoming a bit superfluous. Yep. Uh, and so, yeah, those who are focused on, on absolute re revenue generation, while at the same time mm -hmm. building the brand and while at the same time making absolute certain that your message is resonant, all at once, mm. uh, those people tend to find their way to us, which is great and exciting. And I'm, I'm, it's it's a, it's an amazing experience. I'm super excited as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, Chris, where where can people find you? Do you want to put maybe we'll we'll link everything in the description mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. if you have anything you want to shout out now, website, uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, it's uh, so I have my own website is uh, I, I do write on Medium. It's uh, demetricus.medium.com. Cool. Okay. You can also find me at Demetricus.com. Uh, it's the nice thing about having an unusual name is that <laughs> I'm on Twitter. I'm at Demetricus. Nice. Uh, same on LinkedIn. If you want to find me on LinkedIn, it's mm. just Demetricus. Right. Um, our, our website is mm. mnzt.io. Okay. Great to know. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to check out what we what we got, that's where you can find me. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chris. It was Thank a great you. talking to you. Yeah, great, great conversation. Fun. Yeah. You're welcome I'm, anytime. Yeah, I'm looking forward to more mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully we can work together again soon. Excellent. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Brian.